Hello, Pedro here. In this quick flow, I'm going to finish up the Penrose Triangle project by getting the elements that I rendered in Houdini into Fusion so that I build up my final output. I want to thank Michael Wolf and Oliver Hotz for helping me to pick up the base in Fusion since this was the first project that I did in it. But I want to also recommend you to see Alexander Kutzer's video about using the same render elements, both in Fusion and in Nuke. It was a really insightful video. I learned a lot. And in my case, I'm just going to do a very simple setup so that I can call this done. So I have here the two render elements, the UV pass that is rendered three times the size and the shading pass that is in HD. The UV pass is three times the size with no anti-aliasing because uh, passes like this are not to be comped on top of things, but they are to be reinterpreted. They're like a perimeter pass. And so if I would have some anti-aliasing, that would mean that I would have uh, some blurring of the perimeters that I'm driving. So things like this, the depth pass, etc. they all usually don't have any anti-aliasing on them. Now, the first thing I want to do is to pick this pass and apply these well, wood texture onto it. And the last thing I'm going to do is probably going to just apply this as a background for the whole thing. So let's go into uh, the UV pass and the texture. So you can see that I can drag things into the viewers to see what's going on. And to put these two together, I'm going to put here add tool depth pixel texture. And I'm going to put the UV pass in the background and the texture on the foreground. Now you can see that right away, this I have the texture applied onto the UV pass. And with these parameters in here, I can control the texturing, the mapping, and I can also use, uh, offset those values and have some, some nice animation going. Now you see there's some flickering. And so to control that, I'm going to put the UV pass here into the mask. So it cuts off. And now I, I get this and it's much, uh, much nicer to, to look at as I slide uh, the texture. Great. So first thing I'm going to do before adjusting the texture, which is not up to the same proportion as, as I've seen in here. So here I have squares, here I have rectangles. What I'm going to do is get the other three parts, the other two parts actually. So composite, merge, put the same thing in the background and the foreground, but the foreground will be rotated by 120 degrees. So as I drag this into the viewer, you can see that now I have one part. And if I keep doing this, I will get the other part. So put this in here. And so instead of 120, I'm going to put 240. And now I have this. Now, one way to centralize this input is to come here and press Alt and drag out. And so now I have this nice little pass through node that if I would want to replace the texture used in all these three merge nodes, this would be much easier. You know, I just need to replace this single instance in here. Okay, so I have this, I have my object mapped. Um, I notice everything looks sort of nice. But when I was doing this, I noticed that there was some garbage in the alpha and sort of wanted to get rid of that. And one way to go about it is to use this tool called uh, so filter erode dilate. And you'll notice that if I come here and I, I if I drag the slider, if I if I press down control, and I drag, I have a fine control of the of the parameter. It's not a very drastic, uh, not a very drastic change. So let me drag this into the viewer. And so as I drag here, you can see that the, those edges, those black edges go away. Right. So this is this is what I want. The only issue is that while my alpha looks uh, better than uh, than before, right, this this, this looks better. Uh, the the color looks worse because the texture had some sort of quality, but now the pixels are dilated. So they look like blotchy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to composite this in the background and put the original image in the foreground. So this goes into the background and this goes into the foreground. So now I have the same image quality, but the alpha is has no black edges. Great. This is fixed. Now, since this is uh, three times the size, I need to scale this uh, down. And so I'm going to put here add to transform scale. And I'm going to put here on the size, I'm going to put 0.3333. So this is one third. It's like I'm scaling the image by one third. And so now you can see that both the, uh, the shading pass and my object, they have the same resolution. 
cool so i'm gonna put the uh, the shading pass in here and i want to put uh, composite merge put the object in the background the shading pass on the foreground and i want to put here on uh, the apply mode i want to put multiply so as i put this in the viewer this is the result it's a bit dark and so i'm going to, going to put a uh, color correction in here so color color corrector and i'm going to bring the brightness up and maybe put some contrast like so and maybe lift this a little bit just just a little bit okay so this yeah this seems fair now i have something that look looks a bit more like an object and not so much as a, a plain texture like before so this looks uh this looks nice uh one thing that i'm missing though is that uh, i need to change the, the proportion of the texture and also animate it so let's let's look into that so i'm gonna come here to the texture node again and the thing that i did in here was that i had three squares across so one two three so i'm going to do the same thing and one of these sliders will allow me to control that so let me put this in here actually the merge will be better great so uh, let's see not this one this one so this allows me to control how many squares across i want to have and again if i press down the control button as i slide the value i have more fine control of the parameter and so this seems to be what i want now i want to recover the you know have the the square proportion back and so i'm gonna move this one and yeah i actually kind of want to to match these so let's see what's the best proportion okay so this seems to be it just need to slide a little bit uh, i i don't think i will have a perfect match you know there's some mismatch here and here so i have to have a, a compromise between all these it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be all right okay so now i have uh, this the texture to to proportion which is nice and i can also now animate it so if i come here to the u offset you can see that i can do that so to animate it just kind of come to the first frame and right click animate and go to the last frame and i want to have one cycle so i'm going to just put one in here and so now as i slide uh, through the frames you can see that this does one full turn of the texture it's a bit a uh, bit slow to see here in the the preview but that's what's what's going on in there okay so now i got my object done uh let's let's see here i'm i want to let's see here what the what i have okay so i got my object done maybe there's a little bit of white aloing here so uh maybe i want to do is to use the the shader pass as uh, to cut off this because you, you notice that i eroded uh i eroded my image and that caused that you know the 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 outside edges i fixed the alpha of these edges but these ones are also got uh dilated so if i come here to the erode dilate and press here this button which basically is going to pass through basically not apply the effect you notice that that white halo sort of disappears so i i want to keep the fix that this made to these internal edges but i don't want to so you can see these these black dots go away if i apply the erode dilate so i want to keep that fix but i don't want to have this halo so to fix that I'm going to put here composite and I'm going to put the shading pass in the background and I'm going to put the result of this in the foreground and here in the operator I'm going to put in so it's going to apply the foreground pixels using the background as the cutoff and so now that went away great now I have my my object I want to do the blurring effect so the blurring effect is you notice uh, the the texture goes in this direction and the blurring effect goes in the other direction and sort of goes you know they, they're going to in, in opposite directions and this was done by having a radial mask so basically I have a, a mask that goes from black to white and let me show you how I did that so have here a background node that I access with this button here I go to the last option I create a key in the middle so position 0.5 and I set the value to to white and the last key I want the value to be black great so now I want instead of having this linear gradient I want to have a gradient that circles around I also want to have uh, this to be an image big enough so that when I rotate it on top of this one it doesn't have any gap 
So there are several things going on in here. I want it to have to be a square image, and also when it rotates, to have you know size enough that it doesn't it doesn't show it doesn't fail in any corner. So I'm going to come here to the image size and put 2048 and 2048, and to turn this into a radial gradient, I'm going to come here to wrap coordinate space, put this in the background and turn on polar to rectangular. And by doing that, instead of having this, now I have this radial gradient. Great. So now I want to uh, animate it, to rotate it, and also put it back into the uh, HD size. So I can do that in one go by using, for example, the uh, my background image, which is HD. And I can put here, let's say, composite, merge, put this in the background, put the, uh, the gradient and in the, the foreground, and I can rotate the foreground. So I can come here to the angle. And so at zero, I'm going to set animate and have it at zero. And at frame 200, I'm gonna have two turns, so 720. So it's gonna rotate two times. I put this in the viewer. I can see that this rotates two times. Great. Now, in one go, I've, I've not only put this in, back into the HD size, but I also rotate it. Great. So now I have my mask, my blurring mask done. I can come here to add tool, deep pixel, depth blur, put my object in the background and put my blur mask here in the foreground. And if I turn on Luma, it's going to read the luminosity from, from this input. And I can put, let's say, something like 15. So let me check what that looks like. And you can see right away that uh, where it's white, where the mask is white, it's going to blur by whatever value I put in here. And where it's black, there's no blurring. So since this mask is rotating around, it means the, the blur will also rotate around. Great. So now I just need to put uh, the, the background. So I'm going to put a merge, put this on the foreground, put the backdrop image file in the background, and that's it. Uh, you'll notice that there's this little black sliver in there. It's like a very, it's a needle. Uh, the problem is that this mask, there's a lot of contrast here in the center. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur that. So I'm going to select this connection, add tool, blur. And I'm just going to put, let's say, uh, 15. And so now you notice that sliver went away. So if I pass, uh, if I pass through this, this, this effect, you notice that the sliver, it's almost like I'm turning it on and off. Great, so this is uh, sort of done. Uh, you, you've seen how to build this object in Houdini, how to render its elements, and how to do the composition of those elements here in Fusion. Uh, of course, you can, to me, this sort of object sort of triggers my imagination. I can imagine all sorts of little worlds going on in here, maybe uh, some, some person going here running and disappearing and other things going on, like like ants, like Escher, an Escher's drawing ants going on this side, etc. And so, you know, I hope this, uh, this triggers your imagination into trying other things. I, for one, for example, uh, grab the road texture. So if I come here and I replace the wood texture with, uh, with this road, uh, texture. You can see that, uh, for example, instead of this, I get this road map instead of the wood. And, you know, it's just a matter of then rendering, let's say, a car just still, but, you know, feeling like there's some motion. And since the, the road is animated, the car can be uh, in the same place. So there's a, those, all sorts of things that one can come up with this uh, setup once you, you sort of dominate it and you start to, to play with it. Cheers.